All right, so today I'm not working on a vacuum. Today I'm setting up and checking out the new Diamond Metalist. Awesome. All right, so here it is. This is the Diamond Metalist. My buddy Jared from Bowtech let me borrow his bow for this video. I had this idea of basically going from start to finish, shooting a whole round with this, setting it up, taking it apart, just to check it out, show you guys what it's all about. I don't even have an opinion on it yet. You're looking at it how I got it. He had his rest, stabilizer attachments, a peep in the string but not tied in. So uh, yeah, this would be pretty cool. Diamond brought this bow to the market as a price point target bow. There's not a whole lot of options right now in the market, so hopefully this will fill that void and make for a pretty sweet bow. Spec wise, you're running with a binary cam system. This allows for a lot of draw length adjustment as well as a solid back wall by using a limb stop as they do on this bow. The draw length is adjustable from 23 inches all the way up to 32 and a half. You're looking at an axle to axle of 38 inches and a brace height of 7 and 1 8 inches. Now those are pretty forgiving specs. It costs you in the speed market though. It's coming in at an IBO of 322, which really isn't too bad. Draw weight options come in 10 pound increments. You got 40, 50, 60, and 70 pound limb options. This bow is pretty well designed to fit any shooter out there looking to get into target or just add to their collection. The mass weight of this bow is four and a half pounds and the effective let off is 80%. So let's go ahead. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. The important stuff, color options, black, white, red, and teal. And they all come in this nice, shiny, target looking colors. All right, so let's take this thing apart, check it out from the inside. CF Press. All right, so I've got the limbs off the bow here, and it's a pretty straightforward limb pocket design. The tolerances seem pretty darn tight, pretty straightforward, just little saddle deal here with a plastic limb shim, which is very standard in the industry, and it comes pre-lubed, which is kind of a big deal. Some companies seem to miss that on bows. So far all the tolerances are well within an acceptable level. One nice little thing they do here, which I've come to see quite a bit in the binary side of things, is uh, the ability for tip well. Most of the time you don't have a whole lot of tuning options with the binary cam system because you don't have the options of twisting yokes and things. So what they allow here is on both sets of cams, on both cams, you have two shims, that's it. But one's thicker and one's thinner. So what that gives you the option to do is if you need to uh, shim a cam over one way or another, you can just flip those spacers to get the tune you want out of the bow, which we'll be doing later. Don't worry, won't skip that. One. impressed with the uh, design and tolerances of this bow. I see absolutely no reason it won't be a real good shooter. One thing I will harp on is the finish of the bow. Could be a little better, but considering it's a budget style bow, it's about to be expected. It's around the grip and things are really nice. 
just where it's been tapped for like the limb pockets, you can see some imperfections. But the actual finish, like around the handle and the actual riser itself, seemed pretty well. In fact, they even beveled out where they had to thread for the sights and rest. So it actually looks really nice. One other thing that appears to be looked over, or I don't want to say looked over because there's no way you can overlook it, but slightly changed is the uh, lower stabilizer mounting options are pretty limited. It's not threaded to allow your bracket to mount from the actual back of the riser. It's only mountable from the side. Not a huge deal as you can see, it works okay with the standard B Stinger sidebar mount. But one thing I would expect to see changed in the future. It's gonna be cool. Now Jared sent this bow to me with an aperture in the peep. I personally shoot a clarifier. My eyes aren't very good and I like having a real crystal clear target. When I'm shooting indoor, which is what I'm setting this bow up for, I also shoot a black dot on my lens. It's a 0.5, well on this one, on this particular sight, is a 0.5 diopter. At my draw length and things it's about a 4 power. And a number one clarifier seems to clear it up real good. It clears the target up perfectly and it leaves my black dot, which would be considered kind of large, real fuzzy. But I like that because what it does is it leaves me just a halo of white around that dot. And that's how I aim. I just bring that black dot into the white and just allow that halo to kind of stay floating around the outside of the dot. And it's just a really, I've tried all kinds of things, pins, it's different size dots, and that's just the most relaxed sight picture for me personally. So I got that clarifier in there, got the sight bracket mounted. I'm just gonna leave his stabilizer mounts the way they are for now. I might tinker with them a little later on. Like I said, I'm, I mean, this isn't my bow, so I'm not gonna put a ton of time in making this an absolute tack driver. I will tune it, see how it tunes up. But as far as messing with my stabilizer weights, which I've already got set. All right, it's looking pretty good. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and set the peep hide, tie it in, and it's pretty much ready to shoot. All right, take it out and shoot it on the range. Shop's open, so it'll probably be people on the range, but oh well, hopefully they don't mind. I'm back. This is day two of the Diamond Metalist Biddle. Today I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start, I've got, I've been brainstorming, I've got some ideas. I'm going to go ahead and start tuning the bow, someone's pulling up, and getting it all set up to be shot. Alright, so we're going to tune it, shoot it, see how it does. So far I'm impressed, but it's just not quite ready for my style. So we'll go ahead and get working on it now and see how it goes. All right, so the first thing on my list of things to do is to tinker with the let off. So right now, the way it's set up, they claim 80% let off. Um, it doesn't quite feel like it to me, but it's a little jumpy. It's got a short valley, 
which is pretty popular with a lot of target bows. You see that a lot, especially in the Hoyts. I'm, it's coming to mind right away. It's got just a short valley. So as soon as I relax, which I shoot a really static shot, which like I said, I don't necessarily recommend. I don't like that I do, it just works for me. When I relax into that shot, it tries to lurch forward on me, which I'm sure you saw quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to lengthen that valley a little bit. So here's what we've got, is we've got a binary cam system. So there's two adjustable mods, one on each cam, and then you've also got your limb stop. So the mod determines when that cam rolls over, which is what has the hashtags and things, or the hash marks for uh, your draw length measurements. So that determines when the cam rolls over and your limb stop determines when it actually stops. And that cam actually comes to that back wall. So what's kind of cool about that is you can adjust those separately, which is what I'm gonna try to do. So I'm gonna keep the draw stop in the same location, the limb stop rather, because that actually determines the length of the draw. Then the mod determines when it rolls over. So I want it to roll over a little early. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that mod a half inch shorter and that uh, limb stop keep it the same. So that'll allow that cam to roll over first and then it hits that stop a half inch later than what it is now. Now, I personally think that might be a little bit too much. There's a few different things we can do as far as building up the limb stop and things like that to get it just right. But I'm gonna go ahead and try that and give it a try and we'll see how that feels. And adjusting the draw length on these cams is super easy. Let me bring you in a little tighter. All right, so here's the cam. You've got your three Allen screws there and the limb stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna loosen these three Allen screws. And you can see I'm on the 29 and a half mark right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it and rotate that mod into the 29 inch mark and tighten them back down and then give it a try. I'll have to do it to both cams, obviously. So I'll go a half inch shorter, which should be the next slot right there. Flip it over, and we're lined up with the 29. Flip it back over. That's money. All right, so there's various ways of tuning bows. My preferred method is bear shaft method. I know a lot of people paper tune. I just feel like bear shaft tuning is, I just feel like it's more precise. I've tested this before where I've shot through paper, got it shooting a perfect bullet hole, came out to bear shaft tune. It was kicked just a little bit, centered it up. Bear shaft was good with the fletch shaft, came back, shot paper again, and it was still bullet hole. So I just feel like it's a little bit more precise. I'm usually not super, super picky with my own bow, but I'm just gonna play with this one, tinker with it, and see if we can get it pretty much perfect. So we'll go ahead, shoot it now, see what we're starting with. And like I said, you saw me put this thing together. I wasn't being super precise putting it together. Enough talking, let's just shoot this thing. Not too bad. Let's see. Not a bad start. Just hitting a little high. So what I think that's probably from is, I'm gonna check my rest. I got a feeling it's from my rest though. When I was setting this, I wasn't real careful. Typically, when I'm setting a blade rest, I take a lot of the weight off the blade because what you do, what you get is when the bow, pretty light blade too. This is an 8,000th with a full grain, full length and grain trip or full, uh, full weight triple X with 140 in the nose. So what you get is when your arrow's knocked, you get a lot of bend in the blade. It bends quite a bit. But what you do is when you draw back, 
there's not all this leverage out on the point pulling that blade. The point comes to like here. So then it doesn't have as much leverage so it doesn't bend as much. And the other thing is when you shoot it takes a lot of the weight off of it too as long as it's tuned right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back. Oh yeah, I can tell right here. When I take, when I take most of that weight off that blade, you can see it's running uphill pretty clearly. And that was just me throwing it together. So let me get an Allen wrench. I'll just tweak it here and see. That wasn't a real good shot, but take a look. And just like that, our height problem is almost entirely fixed. It was a bad shot though with that bear shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it again. That felt a lot better. All right, so point of impact's about the same. We're just running a little knock right. All right, so what can I do to fix that? Well, with this bow, the cable slide's not adjustable, or I could tweak that. There's no yokes, or I could tweak that. And I could shim the cams, because like I said earlier, there's a thicker shim and a thinner shim. However, I'm not gonna do that, because I think that's gonna be way too much. We just need a very, very fine adjustment. So what I was doing is I was looking at the rest there, and it looks like it could be just outside, just a, whoa. That's one downside to that mounting bracket, that side hole. But anyway, I'll tighten that up. I'm running a little bit outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tweak that rest in just a touch and we'll try it again. It is hot in here. No wonder, it's 76 degrees in here. All right, so I tweaked it again just a touch, and uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go with that for now. All right, guys, today's the day. I'm gonna be shooting the Diamond Medalist for score. It's been kind of busy. To be quite honest, this isn't actually tomorrow. This is a couple days later. I had the ASA State Tournament this weekend, so I went ahead and shot that, and then got back into this bow. I've shot maybe, maybe 200 or so shots out of this thing. But I'm super excited. This bow's been shooting great. There's no reason it shouldn't be a perfect shooter. So other than I'm the one shooting it. We'll get it out on the range right now. I'm gonna hang up a Vegas face and see how we do. Halfway, halfway, still clean, low X count, but still clean. All right, I'm in the ninth end, getting a little nervous, a little jittery, but hey, it's a lot of pressure filming a full round. But I think this is a good little test of this bow because number one, I don't have a whole lot of arrows I, don't, I haven't spent much time behind this bow at all. And number two, um, it just goes to show how it's gonna perform under pressure. I'm not feeling my grip slip much. The grip shape is really what I'm loving about this bow. It holds really nice, and whether I push, pull, anything, I'm not getting any of that rocking motion. So I'm really liking that. But 
This was the last arrow of my ninth end. I thought for sure I'd missed it. I don't see any yellow in between there, so I'm gonna call that one in. I think we did it. First full scoring end, well, first scoring end with the Diamond Medalist 38. I was a little excited on that last end that I barely made that one in. So I forgot to write down my last end, but finished with a solid 3X. So I'll go ahead, I'll pull this target, take it back in the office and uh, kind of study it, see what we ended up with. All right guys, all done. Shot a full scoring round with the diamond medalist on a Vegas face. It was a 322X. And to be quite honest, I probably could have grabbed four more at least if I would have <clears throat> moved my sight. I didn't miss a single shot high. They're all a little low, hugging the bottom edge of the ten ring. But hey, not bad at all. I was just kind of grooving along and it shot awesome. So 322X out of the bow. I haven't, I know for a fact I haven't shot 300 arrows through it. So that's awesome. I can't complain one bit. I'm not a 30X shooter by any means. I think my highest is like a 27. So I can't complain at all. This bow really performs pretty... I need a hat. The bow performed awesome. Uh, the biggest thing I'm a fan of is this grip. It's got the perfect angle, just a slight taper towards the top. Whether I pulled, which I usually don't do, or relaxed, it didn't rock at all. I didn't feel any torque going on. It shot awesome. I kind of apologize. I feel like this video was super hodgepodgey. It was over the course of a few days between sighting it in, setting it up, tuning it, and actually getting to finally shoot it. But I've been super busy between prepping for state, prepping for deer season. The shop's been picking up. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit like, subscribe, find us on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you like. This is Tim Madden with the Hedge Post Media.